Hi, everybody. I'm still sort of getting set up here. No. No, I did that wrong. Let's see, share. Hi. Here we go. I just have to share the link on the Facebook. And we're ready to go. Hopefully. I don't know, I messed with some settings, so hopefully I didn't mess anything up. Let's see. So I need to call Kyla. She's going <laughs> to... So many hellos. Thank you. This is awesome. I'm very happy to be here and out of my house. Redial. We're going to get Kyla on speakerphone. I can't... I can't be totally alone. Hello. 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 I don't know if they can hear you, but I can hear you. <laughs> okay. I don't see you live yet. Uh-oh. That's okay. I'm, I got it. Oh, okay. So I shared the link on... I'm getting... I think lots of other people see see me. Um, right. I shared the link on Facebook. There we go. Okay. I okay. Gotcha. So complicated. Oh my gosh. I know we're very high tech. Yeah. So I'm sacrificing the top of my head for um, a little closer and a little bit more of a downward angle, so that um, hopefully we can see things a little bit better. I have the swax on. If you have swax. If you don't have Swax, um, a good runner-up is um, a little bit of a tacky wrap sticky bun to rub on your wires. Um, and while the Swax is warming up, we can make our armature. Oh, they can hear you. <laughs> yeah, everybody's saying hi. Someone said, what would we do without you? And apparently they would die without you. So. <laughs> I certainly feel the same about um, about you guys and work, and it's definitely been weird for all of us. Um, so we can address the the site is closed right now. Um, I have a plan, and I'm hoping to open. I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens around here, where where we are. Um, in the northeast corner of Maryland is right next to Delaware and Pennsylvania, New Jersey isn't far away. And um, my and the Serafina staff is in three different states, so we all have kind of different things affecting us and our lives. But um, no matter what, uh, we all share the same, I think, um, affinity and spirit for what we're doing. And I, I'm just counting on that to, uh, to pull us through. <laughs> So, and you know, honestly, I've gotten more yard work done in the last few days <laughs> than I probably did all season last year. Yeah. So, Actually, the weather has been really nice. Yeah, also. the weather changing has been really good. I was just thinking, like, all we need now is like a deep freeze and a snowstorm, and like, we would definitely all lose our minds. Yep. So, okay, let's get started because I, I definitely want to spend our time on this. Um, all you need is 20, I'm using a 22 gauge wire. I'm using brown, you can use white, doesn't matter. And a pipe cleaner. Again, the color doesn't really matter. It, a little bit might show through the beak, but, um, so I usually try to somewhat match my pipe cleaner, but that's a minimal issue. I'm gonna use the new um, Chick Yellow because it's like getting a new car. Like you, you can't go back to the 
to the old one, but they're similar in their loftiness and their thickness, so that'll translate well. A lot of people got it in the Fiber Fairy. Um, it's not for sale yet, but um, hopefully when we do open back up, it will be for sale. We have to kind of see what's what there. And then I think I'm going to use duck fluff, which I've never used on a chick before. And I'm going to shingle it with the um, sweet corn. I think in the tutorial, oh my gosh, I was watching the tutorial just before we started and it's so old. It's vintage. <laughs> it's vintage, Serafina. It was in the mill. Um, it was over the shoulder, which was a big step up from goats. <laughs> so um, you, if you have really any yellow top coat that you have will work. And then for the legs, sometimes I do their little gray legs. Sometimes I do, this is um, butterscotch, which is great for legs. I think in the tutorial we used um, gold, maybe. The um, Romney gold or autumn gold. But I like the texture of the butter um, butterscotch top coat for the legs. And I have a little bit of black. I mean, this is like, all we need is a little bit for the eyes. So don't mind that. These are some grays that I pulled out just maybe for the legs. And then the same um, bad tawny that, that Sassy used in her bunny. <laughs> I might use, sometimes I like to do a little something different on the wing tips or around the eyes or like a little head fluff. If you have a tablet or a laptop or something you can have open with a little chick picture that's that's always good I might do that on my laptop as well all right anything um you know, people are saying you're frozen but it's not mine like mine looks fine so I'm okay re, like refresh okay people are saying it reloaded and it's okay okay so. okay what I see between on my stream is moving um Frozen. Okay, Kyla says. Okay, um, they say like click refresh your page and see if that helps. Okay, good. Came back. They're saying. Okay, good. Hmm. Who knows? Glitchy. It's gonna be glitches. Okay, so we are gonna take our twenty-two gauge wire, and our measurements are important because the feet. It just makes it like perfectly there's not any extra wire so I'm going to find the center and give that a, a pinch and then you know it's just folded in half and then from the fold I'm going to measure three inches and fold at a right angle So you have something that looks like this. It's hard because I have like about a 15 second delay. So if I look at my laptop to see what's happening, I can't really see what's happening because it's 15 seconds ago. <laughs> so now to make the feet, let's all go, let's all go the same direction for simplicity. Let's all go clockwise. If the wire is pointing forward, is your chick facing forward? So my chick's facing forward. I'm just going to tip him back. And now I'm looking at this long wire that's going to become all of his toes. And you just keep folding it over in the same direction. Just keep folding in the same direction. So if I'm going clockwise, I'm going to fold three quarters of an inch over. Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. <laughs> like that. So I just folded it straight over as hard as I could. And then you, you, if you have some pliers, you could pinch that, pinch that tight. You had now? Yes. <laughs> and then on the no, so now we're pointing backwards, right? We've changed the direction of this wire and we're gonna go 
a half an inch, the little back toe is a little bit shorter, and I'm gonna go clockwise again, like the arm of a clock, and bring it forward. So now I've got something that looks like, like a paper clip, basically. And every time you make a toe, you wanna keep the ankle in the center. So now I'm gonna go over the, um, the ankle wire and make the toe that's, I feel like it's backwards, make the toe that's at two o'clock. So it's come over the foot because I want to enclose that ankle wire and I'm going to do a three quarter inch toe and fold it clockwise. Now I'm going back behind the leg wire and then the last toe comes up and if you have enough to fold it over you can fold that little end over. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You can come sit back here if you want. <laughs> Mary's here. All right, how did that go? <laughs> you there, Kyla? I'm here. Okay, any questions so far? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The tricky part is is wrapping the legs. Somebody said, which is true. Okay. So let's do the other foot. I'm going to do a three quarter inch, folding to the right, or clockwise. Now I'm pointing past the leg wire, and I'm going to do a half inch toe back here. Now I'm pointing forward. I'm going to go over the foot and do the toe that's at two o'clock. Now I'm behind the leg wire. Whoops, I gotta make that one a little shorter. I feel like, I feel like this part's tricky, getting these little toes right. That's, that's saying something because you're like able to eyeball. Yeah, it's just because there's no extra wire. I guess we could make the legs like a tiny bit shorter and give ourselves a break, but you know, we all need the challenge. Okay, so I'm going to pinch all my toes closed, tight. They do kind of have wacky big feet though, so it's okay. Someone's watching on their TV. You are like nice. larger than light. Okay, then you want to give about halfway up give that their legs a little bend. And now they just there's your imaginary chick. I'll give you guys a second to finish folding your feet and we'll do the pipe cleaner part. Some people did this yesterday. Oh good. Why? To build the ahead of time. Definitely. I was making a few with a one inch middle toe and then three quarter inch other toes. Wire is a funny thing, like, you know, you think you got it, but just like one, it gets out of whack pretty quickly and then it's hard to get back into whack. So someone's asking about things falling over. I mean if they have four legs they should stand up. <laughs> if it's a two-legged project it's hard to get two two-legged things to stand up. Um, you can flatten out the foot like with a piece of leather you can have, um, if it's something that has a tail, they can use the tail to balance or, um, you know, a walking stick or something, but. Once they get that round body, it's hard to make a balance. 
Are you ta are we talking about two legged things or four legged things? Because four legged things should be fine. Yeah. So an alternate to swax would be beeswax. That's what I used to use in the beginning. But swax I'm able to put on top of the wool. Um, beeswax you can only put on the wire under the wool to help it stick as you wrap. But you can't put it on top of the wool. I mean you can, but it, it's opaque and flaky when it dries. So that's how swax differs. <laughs> she said it's four-legged. <laughs> I'm saying it shouldn't be a problem. So just just kind of keep situating. I see a lot of people who make four-legged animals that um, um, don't put their legs underneath them. Um, so just keep, you know, kind of moving it around and see if you can get it to stand up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Jimmy is more tape instead of wool for covering the feet, for covering the wire. Yeah. Um, I don't. I guess some people could. My question with tapes is the acidity. Like, so are they, um, what's the word? It's eluding me. Acid free, um, basically, so that they'll last a long time. Because, like, if you ever see masking tape that's, like, really old, it gets all yellow and kind of hard. It gets really dry. Too. Yeah, yeah. So that's my question about that. Okay, so on your pipe cleaner, find the center and gently twist, meaning don't super tight twist, just, just gentle twist, just enough to get these two um, sides to marry together and go about three inches. And at my last twist, I, I like to do a little firmer one just to definitively, you know, just to say, all right, that's where the twist ends. And then... You match up your leg triangle with your pipe cleaner triangle. And in this case, you know, when we twist shoulders, we twist the wires evenly. But in this case, you're just going to wrap the pipe cleaner around, um, around the 22 gauge wire. So I think just one, like kind of two times around. So I'm here, I'm going to go around and around. So now it's sticking. That's going to be his little tail butt. Little tail butt? His little, yeah. Tail butt bone. Okay. Bottom. And then twist those together and then just fold the, fold the ends over. I ended up with about a one and a half inch tail butt. Not to be confused with Talbot. Aw, Talbot. Yeah. And then I give the, the, the nose, the beak is about a little half inch, half inch bend, so you guys can see that. And then that little hook in the head, it's like a rainbow. They all end up different. Okay, good. Oh, good. She got her animal to stand up. <laughs> so funny. Okay, I'm going to use the butterscotch and. How, before you do that, how long is the body itself? The body, I have two here and they're slightly different. So let's see, if I kind of don't, it's about two inches or one and a, you guys see that? This one has a bigger head, but a shorter tail. So, I mean, really we all started with the pipe, same pipe cleaner. It shouldn't be too much different. <laughs> shouldn't be. You can, if you're super frustrated with the legs, just leave them, you can even just leave them wire. They're meant to be kind of, you know, little renditions, not really like, kind of like the bees or, 
most of our bunnies are interpreted like still stylized. Okay, so I'm gonna use a six inch piece, which might be, that might be a little excessive. So four or five. And I'm gonna split it in half so that I have a rather thin ribbon to work with. And I could go, you could go around the base of the body just to get it going. And then you just travel down the leg and I just try to be consistent and tight. You could tacky wrap this if you wanted. Oh yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Hey Mary, will you do me a favor? Will you look in that plastic bin on the bottom there and see if there's a tacky wrap sticky bun? They're just loose in there. It's gnarly looking. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'm going to tacky wrap that bad boy. It's like rosin in your bow, wax in your cotton, your linen thread for stitching uh, leather. Now, I have enough to do a toe. So when I get down here, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this big toe. Okay, so I go out towards the end of the toe, but before, this is using the swap. Before I get to the end, oh, I didn't get a toe. So sorry. Before I get to the end, I'm going to put swax on the wire. Now, when I go around there, the wool is pressing into the swax. And it just magically holds it in place. Now, even though that's doing that work there, it's good to go back if you can. Very thin, very, very thin. But if you go back, now your fiber is going out and back and it's anchored at the end of the foot. It's not just hanging out in space out there. So do you wax that's used for waxing thread for heating? I do not know anything about that. Maybe Marsha or uh, Jenny can answer that. It sounds like that is a similar, similar thing. Before I do my other toes, I have this other half, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do my other leg. So that's my um, one leg and one toe <laughs> on that side. Of your Ooh. I never have, I've broken needles in projects. <clears throat> I've never had a hard time finding it. Um, I would dig it out. If it, Well, if it's something that's just going to sit on your shelf, that's fine. You want to run the risk of your neighbor coming over and picking it up. And I'm just kidding. I, I worry I wouldn't sell something that has a, you know, a broken needle, needle in it. Yeah. So it's worth um, excavating. <laughs> Does anyone have questions about the toes specifically? The, the, the thinner the fiber, the narrower you can keep your ribbon, and the tighter, the easier it is going to be to get a fairly tight wrap. Like a smooth, consistent uh, what, wrap. What we use to melt the wax there is just a mug warmer and a dish that has a nice flat surface so that it can mm -hmm. make contact with the mug warmer. People use candle warmers. Um, I like the mug warmer. I feel like it's a little bit hotter. 
when you get so to have, go ahead sorry. go ahead so we have white locks when you open someone also asked about the yellow locks because they missed out on fiber theory there yeah. were people that missed out on the yellow locks yeah um it's going to be hard for me to say because you know not only are we our little group here well, currently closed and affected but all of our vendors and farmers and people that we buy from are affected to different degrees. So, um, you know, what, and we close, like, as we literally packed the last box and the governor <laughs> gave the order, um, the last box from the fiber ferry. So right after this huge flurry of, of orders and activity, um, so, so I, I can't say exactly what we're going to have. Yeah. Um, someone, someone's asking about a white, like a white chick with gray or brown legs. Uh huh. Definitely, I've made those. I've made yellow ones with gray legs. All right, I'm gonna do a couple of little side toes here. I'm using a very thin, small piece, and I just go around. When you start out, if you can go around the base of the foot at an angle. It'll kind of secure where you have all those wires crossing. It'll just kind of secure everything in there. So I think this is the one that I did the longer center toe. So just take your time, get your toes wrapped. I'll give us, it's uh, 126 here. I'll give us a good five or 10 minutes to get these toes wrapped. See where we are. I think I always do sort of different things at the base of the feet here. It's like I said, it's been a long time since I've made one. Marsha made a few chicks lately. Marsha's been busting out Ticks and bunnies. You see those um, beaded gnomes that Jenny made? Oh, so those pretty. are adorable. All right, I used this piece on this back toe, and now I'm not sure it's going to be long enough for this. Butter toe. Make his leg look short. <laughs> um, I think it's pretty easy to, um, if you don't wrap your pipe cleaner kind of tight and up towards the top of that point, if you let it come down real far on your legs, then your legs kind of start to become body instead of sticking out. It's a beautiful day here. I have the door open. Oh, so nice. Oh. Yeah. I was walking in shorts and a t-shirt at 11 this morning, and I was warm. That's awesome. Went for a walk with Dave and the boys and Milo and Notch yesterday. Oh, and my Yes, I did. <laughs> we saw, like, four people we know. So funny. They were probably like, what the heck? Um... Because Dave and I are divorced, in case you didn't know, but we still do things together. And um, I saw a rainbow. I think that's a thing, right? To oh. to put little rainbows out. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like on a tree, or it was a uh, painted rock, so that was fun. Oh, okay. It's just it is cool, you know. We're kind of, you know, just not even attempting a felt on earth this year because of the, the current. Um, circumstances, um, but it's kind of a similar thing, you know, like a little treasure for someone to see or a little sign of unity. Pretty cool. Marsha's going to make a gnome with bunny ears. Like, Aww. Like a hat. That's awesome. If someone wants to know where Milo is, 
I left Milo at home. Oh. I know. So wrong. <laughs> Here's my feet. Some days, I think it's good for them. <laughs> you don't need to go. You don't always get to go. <laughs> oh, boy. How are you guys doing? I have three more toes. <laughs> oh, boy. Favorite thing in the whole world. Wrapping toes. I'm. I'm actually not. I'm not hating it today. I'm enjoying it. Marcia said Milo's on the phone. <laughs> yes. Whoa! Show off. The UK. They're overachievers in the UK, apparently. Well, they're five hours ahead, so she's had plenty of time. Right, exactly. She had five hours <laughs> to get it done. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you going to swap the meat? I think I will. I think I need a little reference picture. I was saying you should have that, and I don't have it. If all your ends kind of meet at the base of the leg, you know, in the center of the foot, then, and we just do, after the toes are wrapped, we just do a little wrap around, that kind of helps hold, then it gives you something to needle felt into and helps hold everything together. These are some of the best feet I've ever done. I am sort of taking my time. So nice that someone all the way in the UK can join us. So cool. Another trick. Don't ask me what my what my kids think of Milo. Well, they're teenagers now, and they pretty much roll their eyes. <laughs> Every now and again, I'll say something in the house, and they're like, oh, "Sound like Milo." <laughs> Oh yeah, well, I'm, I don't have any pigment in it right now. I mean, it's basically clear. The thicker you get it, the more opaque it would become. You can really notice on like a bright white, but anything else? It's even okay on white. Um, it's good on white. It's really just the, the thickness that might affect it. Like I feel like even on white, if you used Swax, you wouldn't really see it. You know, it's been a while, I should try. I got this little janky, over short, anytime you're doing tiny toes, really like with this, the techniques that I use, a quarter inch, anything shorter than a half inch really is too short. Like I have a little hind toe here that's way too short. And that just makes it very hard to wrap. Cause you don't have any traveling distance to go. And it wants- We designed this armature anyway. It's easier to be a smart aleck over the phone in a whole nother world. You don't seem to have any trouble. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> Not noticing a a lull ever. I count on it. I wonder how long the shop phone is gonna stay. On. <laughs> It might come 
computer does not like this too. It's plugged in and it's losing battery and it sounds like it's trying to so. Debbie just showed up. Yay, I got you in time to see code. <laughs> she's a freak who loves wrapping code. <laughs> Not too many mistakes in Fiber Fairy. Well, I think they were mine. <laughs> Maybe there's still some we haven't heard of yet. Yep. But that was a lot. I'm amazed anyone can hear me. Barry's having a hard time hearing me, but I'm at home on my cell phone going There's probably a different way. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I could have gone. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, he does. All right, bye, Mary. Yep, I'll be talking to you. What'd you say, Kyla? Joyce's husband is working on the phone and doing hypnosis. Ooh, I want to do that. I so want to do that. You can do it over the phone. I want to find out about my past lives. I don't know what I want to know. I just want to be hypnotized. <laughs> okay, we're going to step away from the legs for a minute because there's a little more to do there, but sometimes I I need to help. Oh, I read something and I said the wrong word. Sometimes I need to change the scenery. All right, um, we're going to keep going. There's 200 of us, so <laughs> I can't. To if I mean, if, you're, done, you can if your toes aren't done yet, uh, you can go back to them. Yep. So let's work with about a six inch piece of core and split it in half lengthwise. Honestly, actually, I don't know what core I have here. No, I do have the new core here. Oh, the, the beak, we do have to do the beak. Okay, so let's get a four inch piece of whatever you used on the legs. I need to split mine in half. And we just wanna wrap that beak like nice and tight. You can start way back on the head, which is nice because then you can go out to the tip of the beak and back. Don't try to just wrap the beak, but by doing the beak first, then we cover whatever, you know, we, we had back here on the head. So at the base of the beak, which is that half inch back, I kind of want to go a little thick there. And as I come out to the tip, I'm going to get thinner. I'm going to put some flax on there. Come out to the tip of the beak, nice and tight. Angle back. Pressing that swax in. Then I can thicken up as I go towards the base of the beak. And then I'll just finish out around the head. I might kind of come down again to smooth all that out. I want to open up a chick picture. I'm afraid my computer's going to have a conniption. Uh, we should have them in the reference. We've got to oh, them oh like yeah, that means I have to get up. <laughs> Let me see what I can do here. Oh my gosh, so cute. Okay. Oh no, I'm so glad your order is going back to the East Coast. What? Uh, I've been emailing with, with Joe. He lives in Connecticut and our order went to California and said it was out for delivery. Oh geez. But it's on the way back. Okay, so good. It out. Good, good, <laughs> good. Okay, now we can... I'm going to turn my swax off for now. 
I might swax my beak later, but I just basically used it to, um, you know, to, to get that tip of that wool to stay on there. All right, so with these six inch pieces, we're just gonna start wrapping and this is, uh, shouldn't be too long or complicated. If I start at the bottom of the body, just in front of the legs, I just wanna go up. This doesn't have to be super tight, super thin. I've got like a nice sort of three quarter inch wide ribbon here. When I get up to the head, this time around, I'm just gonna wrap the head wire. I'm not gonna do any crisscrossing thing or anything. And when I get to the end of the beak, I'm gonna go back because I still have plenty of wool here. Your wool piece might be a little bit different. That's okay, just take it as far as it'll go. So you can see with that one piece, I got quite a bit, quite a bit wrapped there. So somebody's already wrapped the first layer and it says they don't have much of a butt. Is that gonna be a problem? Um, uh, we could make some butt pieces. I mean, you can always like, we make a little kind of dumpy butt shape if you need to make that bigger and kind of like wrap it around and build it out with wool a little bit you can do that i like to have this pipe cleaner back here because i do some wrapping that involves the pipe cleaner um but there's always this medium so cool i mean there's pretty much a way around everything okay so with my second six inch piece I'm going to start at the base of the tail, go back to the end of the tail. This is, I said six inches, but like by the time I stretch this out, it's more like eight. So that was a half a six inch piece. It, I know it looks really long because I kind of tugged on it. Doo -doo -doo. Someone's asking if we can make the beak open, and if so, how? So I would just make a second. Consider this the top of the beak, and then make that second bottom of the beak little tiny little triangle. That'd be tricky. Okay, so I'm back. I'm back to the back to the legs, and I still have a lot of wool. So I'm going to use this piece, or you can pull another piece. But you want to turn them upside down and do a crisscross. So I'm going from his butt wire between his legs to his body wire between his legs the other way. So as long as you X in between the legs there, get a little bit of wool between those legs. Don't go around the leg. You're going, you're going um, crisscrossing between them. So now it looks like a dish. <laughs> Someone's saying, I have a question of the South community or the people chatting. I noticed that none of you greet new people when they enter the chat. Is that common here? I don't see who enters until they comment. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if she's referring to me. Um, I don't because I, I mean, every once in a while, if, you know, if it's a family member or something, because it, uh, I find that distracting. I'm not sure what she's, if she's referring to me or to other chatters or, um, but, whoops. I'm on signed in as us, and I don't even see when people join. Okay, I can see um, on YouTube, I can see comments. I don't see, it's like on Facebook, yeah, I guess you can see when people join. Who's watching? Okay, let's, yeah, 
I'm sorry. I'm not, I may not be answering that question properly, but I don't, not exactly sure what, if they're referring to other viewers or. Right, or right. Here. Um, Sounds like a little chick already. <laughs> that's what I love about these. They're so fun. Okay, let's work with a little bit of a shorter piece. I had six inches. It seemed a little excessive. So I'm going to pull four to five, split it in half. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. And then um, I'm going to, I still have that um, rainbow in the head, and I'm going to do the wrap where I wrap on the back of the head and then on the front of the head to kind of just fill in this hook a little bit, crisscrossing underneath. And it didn't take me much to do that, so now I'm just going to go straight around. And that should make a nice kind of half sunshiny little, like a little half circle, sort of flat, flat down here and round on the top. Okay. All right. And then with this one, I like to build up this area a little bit by crisscrossing. So I go around the body, cross over the back, go around the butt, cross over the back, go around the body, cross over the back, however many times it'll do it. It's the same thing we did down here, except we're doing it over the back. And then I think I am gonna pull a longer piece and just build this up a little bit more, and then we're into making shapes. So that's where I am right now. The 22 gauge wire is 18 inches. That's just the way it comes um, and the way we sell it. Oh, I want to try felting the clothes. I have a few things that are a little janky that I want to cover up with some needle felting or maybe needle felting and embroidery. That would be fun. Okay. I mentioned a little bit of a longer piece, so I'm gonna do that full six inches. I just wanna build up the body a little bit more before I start making shapes. And I'm gonna do the same thing I just did, starting at the neck, come down the body, and then crisscross over the back, around the butt, over the back. And now I feel like he looks like a little, little more a little more substantial. That's a great shape already. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> you can't help but smile. Uh. <laughs> So I have this other half of a six inch piece. I'm gonna split it in half this way, but basically what you want is two, three or four inch pieces to put at the tops of the legs here. So I'm gonna hold the fringe on the body, go around the leg, maybe one, get this chunk off, two, three times, and then return to the body. And that just puts a little meat on there, little thigh bone there. So do you think the majority of people are felting along or? Um, I'm seeing some are watching and taking notes. It definitely seems like some are working along now. Awesome. We gotta figure out what we wanna do next week. What what it's gonna be a little tricky because it might not be 
selling the supplies. Right. So maybe you something, see, maybe the bees, the yeah, hand. or something they might have on hand. All Let me, I have are nests on the brain. Oh, yeah, you could, nests are good. You could do hummingbirds. That would be really fun. I would love to make some hummingbirds. Ooh, let's do hummingbirds. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, sticks using a tacky wrap stick. Yeah. Like with an updated, you know, not the um, toothpick. Yeah. He's got some little thighs now. When I hold stuff up, is it, I can never see what I'm doing. Is it in a good spot? Um, I think, I think so, especially when you have been putting your hand behind it, it's helpful to see. Okay. Getting some excitement about the hummingbird. Okay. Okay. So for the hummingbird, I guess, I think the hummingbird would be good because they can really be anything. And the amount of wool is so minimal. Um, yay, I'm glad everybody's keeping up. Um, hummingbirds with a nest. You might have to come, Kyla, and weed the nest. Oh, the nest. I'm, <laughs> nuts, yeah. I'm on I've eight, seven. I'm on number eight. <laughs> They're awesome. I love, like, you have a style. It's really neat. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, it just some bright colors, you know, even the locks are optional, you know, you could use anything. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's time for shapes. This is exciting. <laughs> oh, eggs, eggs on the face ace are so awesome. Cause they just, oh this so you can, easy. you can wrap and then you just get this little egg shape. It's so awesome. Okay. In the tutorial online, I felted a chest and a butt on the felting surface, but we're going to do it on the Zuli tool. So for the chest, I just want it to be kind of loose and puffy. I don't want like a real tight log. So I'm going to take about six inches and I'm going to leave it whole. And if that should be about a two inch width on the Zulu tool, and I'm just gonna wrap right around, not pulling too, too hard. So that gives you a nice fluffy pillow. Someone would like to see the chick in profile. Oh, here we go. How's that? Okay, and then we're gonna do that again. This one I think needs to be a little bit smaller than that. So I am gonna split it in half. So I've got a six inch piece, I'm splitting in half. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Now I'm looking at about an inch and a half. Slightly smaller. This one's about two inches and this one's a little over an inch. You okay, Kyla? Oh, yeah. No, my 14-year-old okay. just walked by the room and felt, so. Oh. <laughs> we didn't hear it. <laughs> I said, really? <laughs> Hopefully you didn't hear that. Mm. If okay. not, if you did, I blame the kid. Okay, this pillow, the bigger one, we're going to make their little poofy chest. So let one end... Um, come between the legs and let the other one come up to the, oh God, that's big. Let me <laughs> take a little bit off of there. There we go. I feel like this is smaller than what we did, but it's the same. So one end I'm tacking between the legs and the other end I'm tacking. I don't want to go quite all the way up to the head. I'm trying to get it down. They do have a neck, so I'm scooting it down just a little bit. And then you want that nice puffy chest. This is like, just puffs our chick out a little. And I'm not going to felt too much on the center 
just more on the edges and the top and the bottom. I love little baby checks. It's been a long time since I've had them, but man, they are adorable. Chickens too. Like I just love watching chickens. Okay. So that's where my, that chest pillow went from here to here. And then the butt pillow, I want, they have this little dumpy butt. So I'm going to put this side to side, not long ways, going across the tail and felt each end down on the side. What's your mom say? She said my nests are quite luxurious. Oh, your nests are awesome. Did you put them on fanfare? Uh, I didn't. I will. So I'm trying to get this tight up against the core in the sense that you want it to become one with things. You don't want it. Someone's asking you to make the butt piece. That's just the uh, rectangle. Yeah. It was the rectangle. It was a six inch piece that I split in half, wrapped as only tool. Um, the chest was a six inch piece that I didn't split in half, but I did end up actually pulling a little bit of that off because it was so, um, it was a little too big. Well, that's a dumpy butt. Yeah. <laughs> I hope my laptop makes it through. Oh my God. They're so fun. Little white ones are fun. I'm just looking at. All right. The butt piece. So this is a half of a six inch piece. I just wrapped around the Zoli tool. So it ended up about an inch and a half long. And then it just goes across under the butt, but I already put mine on. So it's a little remake. You ever slack the legs? Um, like the you top, could. I you could. I don't usually. I love their little chunky thighs. So um, that's what we're going to do next. And we're just going to make a simple taco with the fringe pointing down. So let's see, let's pull a two inch piece of core two times. I'm just going to stab across the center. Kind of, I'm kind of bringing it in a little, like just kind of tucking it in a little so it doesn't get too wide and stretched out. But if you want to see one, taco stab that area I'm gonna pull a little bit of this fringe off oh my laptop's finally settling down I hope it doesn't mean the video is not working and then that just goes right around that's a little excessive I don't like that don't do that nix that Let's do, um, I'm trying to think of this, how this shape, how I want this shape made. Three inch piece, split in half. Let me experiment for a second. So I go around here. No, I don't like that either. Hmm. Maybe I just need to make it smaller. Okay, so go ahead and get that um, two inch piece of core, which basically you just pull it off and it should be about two inches square. Is everything working? Is everything working? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Answering some people's questions. Okay. No, it just, my, my laptop got really quiet and it's been like, oh, okay. 
Okay, then split that in half. So you have two vertical pieces. And then um, let's make a double decker taco. Felt it, fold it over, felt about a three quarter inch area, and then fold that fringe back and felt it a little bit. I'll show you again. I'm going about a third down, felting across, fold that over, felt about a three quarter inch area, fold that up, and this, yeah, this maybe could have been a facey shape, but just, but that works. that if someone was making a white chick that you do differently there's a few people I think making okay. uh, white ones. So so far with off-white chunky core it's just um, or if you're using I don't know what you guys are using but um, it's just a matter of breaking the wool down a little bit more because the roving is, is chunkier but so far we've only used core wool and I will keep in mind to reference that as we move forward. So mine, because it's a double-decker taco, mine has a little bit of fringe. It, it doesn't matter if it does or doesn't. But I want to point the fringe down and just kind of tuck this around that wrapped thigh area. Give them a little extra thigh poof. It doesn't have to fully wrap completely around the leg, um, but just around what you would see. These aren't like super poseable. It's not like you're going to, you know, pose him like laying down with his legs up in the air. Or maybe you would. You could. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do. You shouldn't assume. <laughs> there are things that we can assume, I think. <laughs> you do your thing. <laughs> All right, yeah, so see, now he's got little little chicken run thighs. I love that movie. I should watch that. I'm currently watching the English, the English game. Well, I watched Self Made, which is about Madam C.J. Walker, who is the first female millionaire in the country, which was amazing. And now I'm watching the English game, which is about soccer in the UK. Um, I think sort of Elizabethan times, maybe. <laughs> fringe down, yeah. What? Okay, we got the fringe. <laughs> So we got wings and some face shapes. Wings, let's do wings. Same thing, take sort of two inch squares, nice healthy ones. And now is when we add a little top coat. So I'm going to add duck fluff is very long. I am going to put that on there. But I could just use the sweet corn. I'm going to put that too because it's going to help hold it all together. And first I'm going to put a little tawny on my wing tip. So I'm just changing the color out at the end of the wing. So whenever you put top coat or color on a shape that starts with core, it's just, it's very thin. It's just a little bit. And then I'm going to use my sweet corn to kind of blend it all together. So your fibers all horizontal. If you were doing white, would you also be doing some kind of? Yeah, if you're using off-white chunky core, I would use Serafina white or snow hair or um, Arctic is a little extreme. It's just, it's very, it's, it's even longer and silkier than the duck fluff. Um, snow hair would be perfect. Serafina white also works. And then if you wanted to... Like darker? 
yeah, you could do gray tips. You could do tan tips. Um, the varieties of, of little chicks um, is, you know, oh, now I want to go get some chickens. <laughs> it's that time of year. I think I dreamt about it. Okay, flip that over so that your dark, if you did do a darker tip, it's still far away from you. So I flipped it over sideways. And then I usually stab a center line so that I keep, you know, oriented. And then you're going to stab a triangle. Now, we want this to be kind of a substantial triangle, not like a flat, like a piece of paper triangle. So I start my triangle about at least a half an inch down from the edge of my fiber. So the tip of my triangle is not all the way up here, it's back. That way I can pull the end back a little bit and then when I fold my sides in, it stays substantial up at the tip here instead of getting like super skinny. Kind of like two, two by two-ish, not counting. Yeah, yep, same, yep, same thing. When you pull that core, if you pull about a two-inch piece, you should end up with kind of a two by two square, and that's what I built what, off of. What's your size on your triangle here? Um, it's about two inches wide at the base, and then just given, you know, where I started at the top. a little bit of that fringe off. That's the thing too, when you make these shapes, if they're too big, you could always pull from the fringy back to make, you know, to work the shape smaller. Because what they're gonna do is go like this. So if I am like, ah, oh, that's just like way too much fiber to deal with up here, I just take some of that off. But this is the area that you want to be well felted independently because that's going to kind of stay sticking off. It stays sticking off the, the chick. Oh, I'm excited to do hummingbirds. I kind of round like these edges out. You don't have to stay going out, out, out. After you go out, you can kind of, you know, come back in again. Can you put the Zuli tool on top? I'm not quite sure what that means. Maybe to yeah. show comparison in size, maybe? Mm -hmm. So it's definitely wider than the Zuli tool. It's very, like, manipulable. <laughs> Don't know what that word is. Manipulatable. Manip manipulable. <laughs> so see how I'm kind of, like, pulling that. I'm not totally pinching it, but you don't need to go out, 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 because this has to connect here, right at the, basically sort of like where their shoulder is, because that's what it is. It's there, it's here, and then this is their wing. <laughs> so I'm gonna put the fringe, let the fringe go kind of around the body. What All that matters is that this little inch end sticks out. Let me get this on and I'll hold it up. Like that. 
I wonder what's happening with Dave and my boys. We're going to look at, at a dog for adoption today. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Let me see if they got, if I have any information. No information, which I think would mean is maybe a no-go. Big dog, little dog? Um, she's biggish dog. It's like a notch looking. Maybe he's... Can you see? So then when we fluff all this out, you know, the wing, all these shapes get a little bit more um, incorporated and goofy looking. I might have to stick with sweet corn. I feel like duck fluff might be too long for these About little guys. How, how far is it hanging off the body? Um. Ultimately, it's going to be about an inch. Right now, it's a little more. But like I said, once all the fluff is on it, that's going to felt it down more. But if you look at a picture, that's hard. They're, they're, you know, everything on these little chicks kind of just looks like <laughs> little poofs. It's hard to tell what's what. All right, it's time to work on the face. You guys are ready? Ooh, the face. I know. They are just so darn cute. So someone said, could we do this every Friday? And in a sense, it's kind of like creature feature. Yeah. Which I would love to do. Um, I think every Friday is going to be too much if we get rolling full force here um but as right, long as right. things are um more you know partial um in terms of hours and energy and everything that we're able to do here i would i would love to keep doing them it's it's really fun and we can treat it like creature feature i love the idea of um you know putting the if it has a supply pack putting that on sale for the felt along um, it, it'll sort of mush into those things. Creature feature fell apart as soon as we got like so busy that I, I just couldn't <laughs> just couldn't keep up. My intentions are good. I have a lot of ideas <laughs> that um, sometimes I can keep them going and sometimes I can't. The wings extend over the hot. Not quite so low. They just they just come over that leg puff we put on there. You want to keep it compact to the body. I mean, these are, even though we're making all these shapes, they really are just little puff balls. So you don't want anything too um, sticking out too much. I might even try um, cutting the edges and seeing if it looks a little more kind of fringy. We'll see. Okay. okay, let's work on some face shapes. We want to make two cheeks. Um, I'm going to use the face ace. If you don't have it, you can use the round end of the Zoli tool. Let's pull a four inch piece of core and split that in half. This is a little bit experimental. Like I said, I haven't made these in a long time. So on the face ace, I'm going to work at the wide side here. And I'm pretty much just going to go around. I'm not traveling anywhere. So that gives me about an inch wide piece. Because it's on this tool, it might have a slight taper at one side. Even when I work on the Zuli tool, I'll do the other one on the Zuli tool. 
I end up with a taper on one side. Okay, so slide those off. And then if one side seems a little kind of more stout and the other side a little more tapered, you want to put the stout side towards the back of the head and the tapered side towards the beak. And stab these cheeks on the sides. Let me put one on and I'll hold it up so you can see where it goes. This is that weird Princess Leia step. Try not to let your cheek get onto the neck. In other words, you're not going all the way down here. The head, you want to stay up on the side of the head. But the cheek is like, it's going from the beak to the back of the head. And I just have a little bit of forehead poking out of the top. So that's the way it looks from the front, from the side, from the back. So take your time, put those on. I didn't like super felt that. They're very poofy and might need to be manipulated a little bit. So, but I do, even though I'm not like, when I put these face shapes on, I'm not felting it rock hard. I do want to make sure it's anchored into the wrapped armature underneath and not just, not too floaty um, in space, which is a pretty common thing to see. <laughs> I was asking if that's Wool. Yes, sorry, that was a four inch piece of core um, split in half. If it's off white chunky core, you'll probably want to quarter it and then wrapped around the round side of the Zuli tool or the wide end of the face ace. Or a spoon handle or anything you have that is similar to that. Ah, I love um, the tools. I really do. Like, I think it's one of the most rewarding aspects of what we're doing is um, is inventing new tools to use. It's pretty cool. I love it, and I still have some up my sleeve. Okay, we need to make a little triangle to fill this space under here. So I'm gonna take a piece of core. I'm go I'm trying to get it oops. <laughs> you know, all along we've kind of been using two inch pieces. I'm trying to get it a little smaller than that. Um so maybe go for kind of like a a one inch square. It's not gonna be that small, but if you pull a similar two inch piece that we use for the wings, just make it pull some off and make it smaller. And then a little bit of top coat on it would be good because um, it should all match. And then I'm going to flip it over. And this time I don't want such a poofy triangle. I want a little bit of a, a tighter end. So I am going to start the tip of my triangle right at the top. And that will give me a finer end. And on this one, you can follow the angle of the Zuli tool, would be good. It would be perfect. She says, we'll see. And then I got a, I got some dark fibers on my stab up here.
All right, and this one I might kind of stretch, eliminate a little bit of that end fiber. I'll show you where it's going and you'll, you can manipulate your shape to what's needed. But it wants to go up and meet the beak and then come down towards the chest. So it's kind of going up against the cheeks a little bit there too on each side. I'm not going to over felt that at the moment until I figure out what the heck else I'm doing. So I just got really concentrated on, I really only concentrated on those top edges and up against the cheeks. And then the rest of it is kind of just floating in space like a dicky. <laughs> like a what? A dicky. Which, I haven't heard that word though. Which, thank goodness, isn't a thing anymore, is it? Uh, too bad. I'm bringing it back. Dickies and headbands. <laughs> what else can we bring back while we're at it? Banana clip? Yeah. All right, now we use the digit widget anymore. What's that? You use the digit widget anymore. Oh, yeah. You didn't use it on these toes. Yeah, you could use it on the toes. Um, you can't do the continual wrap, but if you want to make sure that you're bending each toe the same distance, um, you could hold it up. It's a little tricky on this foot because of the way we crisscross around the foot. Um, to hold the tool in there. Okay, we need the forehead rectangle, which we're gonna use the flat side of the Zulu tool for. Oh, leg warmers, bringing leg warmers back. Oh, yes. I'm doing it. Okay, let's use a four inch piece of core and split that in half. I'm not exactly sure about this. And then wrap the wide end of the Zuli tool. So it's really just gonna be the width of the core. It's kind of like the butt piece we made. <laughs> So there's my rectangle and I want one edge to come to the beak and the other edge to come back on the head. So now he's got like, I, I might stretch it out a little bit, but the first thing I want to do is tack each side down at the edge of the beak. and then tack the back down on the back of the head. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so funny. I mean, isn't, like, it's just amazing. Oh, Mary made some handmade leg, leg warmers. <laughs> All right, so where the head triangle meets the cheeks, that's kind of where the eyes want to go. Um, but you can fringe those edges out a little bit so it's not quite such a line, but it'll get a little top coat too. So all I do is tug on the core so that it gets fuzzy and then felt it down and that makes it a little less like distinctive shapes. 
aussi. It's so funny watching the chick video today and seeing how how much has changed and how dirty the stab it was. I was telling Kyla I like my hair though. I'm gonna have to look at it and cut my own hair tonight. Right? <laughs> I'll show you pictures tomorrow. <laughs> I was thinking about how we're all going to come out of this. I was like, we're going to have good pedicures because everyone's just going to be sitting around at home. Maybe tighter pants. Tighter maybe pants. some wacky, maybe some wacky bangs. <laughs> no, no one cut bangs. Don't do that. Someone else said that cat stole their tool. I can see the wool. I wouldn't have thought like a cat stealing a face safe. Oh, cats are steal everything. All right, black. A little black core. Lately, I've been folding my eyes and my fingers. It it just gives me better than wrapping a toothpick. Better than rolling in my hand. It gives me a little more control. So you want a thin strip. I don't know how to describe these pieces. Two inches by a quarter inch, maybe. And I start by rolling it down as tightly as I can, but then I turn the edges in and then roll it down some more and then turn the edges in. So you're trying as much as you can to make a circle. It, it'll end up a little oblong. So this is about the size of a pea, maybe a little bit smaller. And then when you felt it on, you really want to shoot for round. On the, a lot of times on the chicks, I see um, sort of almond shapes, but you really want to go for round. And if you look at your pictures, I think their eyes are slightly closer to the beak than they are to the back of the head. And this is a job for a single needle to really just get those edges in there. And I'm going right into that seam so that it gets tucked in a little bit. Ooh, someone got a needle from Stephen Willett. Yay! Was that Mary? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I really need to try weaving. I really want to do that. And I got a really simple, neat loom from them. And I had lots of ideas about how to do it and have not. It would be cool to use their loom, you know, use our products, and then hopefully create something that could be shared or, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> so their beaks, so right now we have these little, you know, pointy little skinny beaks sticking out, but their beaks really come back to the sides and up on uh, onto the bridge of their face. So that's the next, that's the next step. Mine has a little bit of a Miss Piggy look going on right now. I don't know why. Like Miss Piggy when she's, when she's bothered by Kermit and she makes that, that face. Face. Yeah. All I right. get you. I get you with the piggy reference. <laughs> oh my gosh, adorable. Okay, what's next? I did this so weird on the tutorial. Basically what I try to do is sandwich the beak. 
to make it wider. So you're either going to make a double decker taco if you don't have the face ace or with about a two inch. Uh, let me experiment with this for one second until I. Let's see, we wrap. The pindle would be good for this because this is a situation where I don't necessarily want a taper, but I'm counting on this to just. So what I want is a seed. So I wrapped the face ace about two dots up, but that might be a little bit much. Let me see. And then because you're making a seed, it's going to kind of have a thicker center and then get thinner towards the edges. That's a little bit much. I'm going to use a little less. So about a two inch piece. Let me go a little lower. I'm going to go down onto the second inch of the face ace. This is going to be better. So on the pindle, it would maybe be the medium, um, the medium pindle. <laughs> Looking at the chick pictures, trying to. Whenever I look at an animal, my brain is trying to make it into the full, the wool shapes that we already use and that I'm already familiar with. Um, this would be a good time too for. Um, um, a mini, a mini stabbing. Oh, oh, here we are. Because oh. I can rest his little head on it. All right, so I want to reveal the beak, which might have gotten a little bit absorbed. And then I want to make two of these seeds. And they go across the beak to make the beak wider. So that I just put one across the top and I used about a two inch piece of wool, quarter inch wide. Sometimes they have a little frown to them, They're a little like. And then this one's going to go under here. I wonder if this yellow triangle that we made needs to go on top of this bottom beak piece. I'm looking for a picture that shows. Yeah. So this yellow triangle down here, I think it would be good if you got the beak piece on and then let the tip of the yellow triangle come onto it. So I sort of teased it back up. And then as much as I can eliminate the seam, you know, a double decker taco really would have been perfect for these because that fringe would come towards the end of the beak and blend seamlessly. So I think it's good not to over swax the beak because then you can keep stabbing into it. So on your little faces, there's some degree of sculpting that needs to be done always. You know, we put the shapes, but the shapes need to be further kind of manipulated and sculpted. Um, I definitely want to give my chick more of a um, brow because they definitely have these kind of 
bold brows here. So with, um, I love to use the face ace for brows or um, you could use the pindles. The Zuli tool is gonna be a little too wide, but with the top coat, um, and you could also definitely do a double decker taco is always good because you get that fold fold and you have that thickness and the fringe. So let me just try here. One, two, three and a half times around. Um, I worked about on the third dot on the faces and then the fringe can go on top of the head. Okay, no brow, brow. You good, Kyla? Did I lose you? No, I'm here. Okay. Uh, someone's wondering if there will be any painting tutorials coming. Oh. Uh, oh, the painting. I have not painted since I went and did a painting workshop, which was so awesome. Check out um, Adriano Farinella. Um, Adriano um, F A R I N E L L A. I think I got that right. It's hard for me to spell in my head. Um, he's amazing. He's an Easton PA. <laughs> oh, he's an angry little chick. Okay, and then with the um, with the butterscotch, you can kind of bring a little bridge of the of the nose up. I'd say if you pull a little tuft and fold it in half, and then kind of roll a point, that might be. A nice amount of wool. I'm going to pull some of the end off. At this point, you're in top coat, yes. I'm using that. Still the butterscotch. That was, yeah, that was the beak color. If you look at pictures, they have just have this little ridge that comes up from their beak, and that's what I'm putting on now. I don't want it to go all the way up um, the forehead. Just Right here. Can you show the bottom of the beak? Yes. So the bottom of the beak got a um, a piece across, but then I I teased that um, tr first triangle that we made and kind of put it on top of it. <laughs> oh. They look like little aliens. So my brows need to be felted back in a little. They're a little big. I'm looking at pictures and trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing here. Trying to make it look like the pictures. This ridge that I'm just felting I'm actually going to cut with a pair of scissors some of this fringe off. Just let you guys stab for a few minutes and shape things. Then we'll put fluff on. And hope all will be well. Fluff's good, it covers stuff. Yeah. So you're gonna work on sculpting the face a bit? Yeah, I'm just sculpting the face a little. I'm what I'm trying to do is look at reference pictures and see see what I need to do 
to make it look a little more realistic. Um, and that's guiding my, my stabbing decisions. Um, and that's not something I can always verbalize. But I feel like it's starting to look a little bit, oh, except for his legs. <laughs> Think of them as having huge cheeks, but I think really most of the puff is the backs of their heads. They have deeper heads. So I'm stabbing the front of the cheek in a little and trying to direct more of the wool towards the back of the head of that of that cheek puff. See how the phone battery is going. Good. Ah. It's good. You're not off the hook yet. Not off the hook yet. So to speak. Okay, I like that a little better. I just, like I said, I stabbed this a little tighter and then tried to orient more of the fiber coming towards the back of the head. Sometimes they have those other colors, like if you used a little wingtip color, you could put that um, over the eye, make a little little eye color accent. What size single needle are you using? A 38. All right, let's fluff. Let's change, change fluff. gears. Yeah. Let me see how this duck fluff is here. Oh my gosh, it is so soft. All right, I'm gonna try it. The duck fluff is a different formula than fur, than Arctic or Panther, or the furs that are gonna be coming out. Um, it's a, got a little bit of a shorter staple. It's got more Merino in it. All right, duck fluff and or whatever top coat you're using. With the duck fluff, I wanna use a little bit of sweet corn just as a kind of binder. I start, at the butt underneath. So with the shingles, this is a, just a great technique to know. You want to have a consistent um, staple length of fiber. So if it's long or whatever, pull it and restack it. Point your fluff towards, I'll do it kind of upside down, towards the tip of the tail. And I'm letting it just extend ever so slightly past it. And I'm gonna felt the center one third of that staple length of fiber. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of sweet corn on here. Okay, so here's a third unfelted. Here's a third unfelted, but the whole not just a line, the whole center one third is felted. And then you flip that top third over towards those other two thirds and felt it down. So that's how it is. Now you have a seam from that shingle, which you're gonna cover with a third 
of the next staple length of fiber. I'm using uh, an amount that's about an inch wide when I make a ribbon. Um, it's about an inch wide. And going up between the legs, I can only fit one, one, but when I get up onto the chest, I'm going to alternate to two. So now I'm just kind of square between the leg wires. I'm felting the center one third. If you're using just sweet corn, that's all you need. You don't need anything else. Any questions about this so far? Not yet. Okay, good. <laughs> and then flip that over and felt that down. All right, let's do, before we go up the chest, let's get the back, the top of the butt here. I'm probably gonna do one off the tip and then one kind of going off to each side. You saw me really fluffy. Yeah. So, rough ball. Oh, you guys have some music on at home. So that kind of covered the back of his tail, or the end of the tail on the top. But when I turn him to the side, he definitely needs one on the side of the tail, too. Yeah, the um, duck fluff might be a bit much. But it's okay, I'll give him a little trim if I have to. I'm moving my wing up out of the way because I don't want to felt down the tip of my wing, obviously. So I've got it kind of lifted up. Get some wool under here. When I do the tops of his legs, I think I'm just going to use sweet corn. Um, not put the duck fluff there. I might not even need to do anything. Let's see here. Why are you stabbing a second bit of fluff? after your first step because i'm using um the duck fluff that i'm using is really fine and the sweet corn has a little more grab so i'm kind of using it as a glue to make sure because i'm not because so much is sticking off i just want to make sure that what i'm doing stays stuck now on the legs here i'm just going to use this because it has a shorter staple and i just want to do one shingle at the top of that thigh. I'll hold it up. So this is where I am with it. All of this is pretty long. I'm probably going to turn it. Um, but that's that folded top coat that I just did on the top of that thigh. Let me just get this other side similar. Very cute. That's funny. So you and I, I get really confused. You and I are talking in real time, but you're seeing the yes. video delayed. Yes. Yeah. I don't have a sound on here. Okay.
doing his other side. Everything symmetrical. Real symmetrical light. Okay. <laughs> So now that I'm up on the back, I want to just go over the, the tops of these wings a little bit. So I'm going to do a shingle like right over the wing pieces. Well, my indicators show <laughs> that we're still at 200 people. So you guys are either hanging in and felting along. I'm sure some people are coming and some people are going. Right. Yeah. But it's kind of cool to see how all this happens. So with this shingle, I'll hold this up. It, it, it incorporates the wings a little bit. So now they're, they're a little bit covered. Um, but like I said, I'm going to be, I'm going to be pulling this up. Basically what you do is you kind of fluff it away from the body and then every, so like that, and then everything that's long, that's real long. I'm going to trim because I just don't want them to look that wild. And then you know, now he looks like all scissor cut. Then you just can keep brushing it again or trim at different angles and it will look a little bit more, um, you know, a little less blunt and a little bit more natural. But that takes a little bit of grooming and time, which I'm not gonna worry about too much at this point. Just wanna keep getting fiber on there. Okay, so I left the bottom between the legs. Um, so I think I wanna do one over here and one over here. So kind of coming in at the chest from each side. I guess I could do one more up the center. No, this will be good. I could, another option would be to cut this long fiber that I'm using before I put it on, but then uh, I don't, I don't then it would be too short. I don't want to do that. It's just another approach. So I hope you guys will um, take your time kind of doing little details on these and then share them on, um, on Fanfare. I love seeing them. Do you reuse what you cut off? I don't. I it's uh, I mean it, not when I'm just like trimming. You know, it's just too too random in size and not usually not long enough to do anything with. So it's good with shingles to kind of overlap or crisscross so that you don't end up with parts. Like, you know, if you just did them all in a row, in a straight row, you might see the edges. Whereas if you do a little herringbone or angles, um, it's going to have a little bit more randomness to it. When you have a second, can you show the one in the front? Someone's asking if that's fluffed as well, which yeah. it is, but with um, regular top coat, right? This is this piece here is his neck 
that neck piece that we did. So I'm just gonna kind of keep that out of the way. Um, I just did one kind of coming from under the wing across the chest this way and one this way. So now, so I've come here and I've come here, I'm gonna do one right in the center overlapping both of those. But you see how, like, how long this is? Um, that's going to have to be trimmed. So now I'm just doing a centered one. I'm not all the way up under the um, chin yet, but if I want to, after I put this piece on, I want to check and see how far that cheek piece, um, that chin piece that we put on comes down over it. It might be good. Good meaning enough. I like fluff um, shingling as opposed to fur. Um, one of the things I like about it is you can you can stab in anywhere, whereas fur, you want all of the fiber sticking off. You can stab in anywhere, like I could even go down here and stab, um, and then just with the brush, you can pull it back out. So it's nice to just have that option to get things to shape more or stick more. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is pull this out, trim it, and then he's got like a little bit of a goiter here. I'm gonna pull some of this extra um, of this triangle piece off and tease it out and felt it, felt it down. I might need a little bit of sweet corn under here to cover this, cover this bump. You want that last fold to be covered, obviously. So I'm just gonna pull his head back, go under here with another shingle, just the sweet corn. To cover where I folded that last one. And then this fold will get covered by the shape piece on the bottom of the chin. Cute. It's looking like insane. It's, he's a fancy, fancy chicken. <laughs> he's little, little trimming. There's, there's always a point in a tutorial or something like this where I'm like, oh my god, it's not, it's not gonna work. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I'm making a disaster. No one's going to have faith in me anymore. <laughs> Hang in there, little chicky baby. This is what my hairdresser is going to have to help me. She's going to be like, oh, geez, Sarah, what did you do? Okie dokie. I'm going to do more trimming, more floofing and brushing. I need, um, where am I here? I need one here. So sort of like one here and one here. And I think I'm just going to use sweet corn on those because it's going to get way out of control if I don't. So also the thing with shingles, so he's been around a while and handled and everything, and they do get a little felted, but they get felted in a way that still looks um, puffy and loose, you know? So that's cool.
So this is going like right up against the head over the wing. And then I'll just be putting up um, some sweet corn on the head to unify everything and get rid of seams. And... Have you ever had a complete video fail that you couldn't share? We are one take McGee over here. Um, we had, um, nope, even the bear, which we didn't have the audio on. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fail. <laughs> we um we shared as a time lapse. So No, we over we talked over the whole thing. We did? Didn't we? Uh, we did time lapse it. Did I time lapse it? Maybe I just took out We refilmed. We, we refilmed with sound. We refilmed and then we but I did a different bear, I think. And then right. we used that bear as a time lapse, I thought. We sat and did a director's cut on the original footage and talked about it. And I ate gummy bears. I remember. Okay, I'm going to have to look now. <laughs> Little chicky baby, you look crazy. What did I do to you? <laughs> now will you fluff the wings at all I don't know should I try it should I be the experiment I don't know you have some fluff going over the wings already though but maybe if I cut the edges a little it'll look a little less oh jeez oh jeez I'm just kidding it's going to be okay no that wasn't a good idea I think you could, maybe the reverse needle would be a better idea, maybe, oh, a blooper video, we have some outtakes, I'm sure, we don't get, there's like a couple of times that I get a little out of line, but we most, I mean, What's like the worst thing you've had to edit out? <laughs> a few off-color jokes, probably. Yeah. There are kids that occasionally watch. There was an entire conversation, but we have that video. Loaded like, but hidden. Camel? No, no, there are definitely some bad things on that. Elephant? Um, no, your whole, your whole boob theory. Oh, my boob theory. Okay. It's, we got to wind down. I'm running out. <laughs> I'm running out of good ideas here. <laughs> but what we need is, I wish I could see your guys's. I wish I could see you guys too. Um, what we, what I need is a little bit of top coat on the head to bring some things together. I think I'm gonna put some top coat to cover some seams and then it reverse needle, which we've never done on the chick head. So like, for example, I've got a pretty strong seam here under the neck. So I'm gonna get rid of that and then let the fluff go to the back of the head. There's some interest in that block that's holding tools. I know. We really need to make to make that. Um, it could be kind of multi. You know, uh, people can put a well, painting right. in there, different needles. Right, whatever you want to put in there. Um, so it can be made like the Pindle Perch is made and then just used for however you want to use it. I'm, I'm, you know, I always just stick my needles in my stab it. But the 42, the reverse, and the 40, I really like to know what I'm picking up. And so it's been helping me, which I've, I've never had that before, where I had like a, um, a needle holder that I could really keep things organized. 
and then the back of the head. I think I'm going to put a little shingle, like a little taco back here, and then see if I need to cover it. But I feel like he needs a little more fuzz and oomph on the back of his head. Now, I'm not sure in the chick video, there might have been another step on the feet or hocks. Um, we might have wrapped the hocks to make a little bit more of a joint in that bend in the leg. A bad professor. <laughs> so what are you doing? You, I've gone. You guys are on your own. Good luck, people. <laughs> Good luck. I've I've gone rogue. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Basically, I'm putting sweet corn top coat on the head to cover seams. Any word on the adopt a pup yet? Um, they played with it. They had a fetch with it. And potentially, I don't know if it's still a potential. They didn't say, um, but that she's friendly but has like super tons of energy and maybe that um i don't think they came home with her but i'm not I, i'm not sure okay i have some work to do <laughs> but this is where i'm gonna stop just because i'm getting a little inefficient here a little white dot in the eye would be good i did not bring my white out um i like the Serafina white for the white dot in the eye. Let's see. Let me look at a picture. Cute. It's cute. Something's not quite right with the head. I'll keep I'll keep messing with it. Um I think I have a little more cheek and a little less forehead than they have. Like maybe I should have a little less here and a little more here. Um, to be realistic, but um, but she's going to be cute once I get a handle on the rest. <laughs> get a handle on it. So now's the time if you have any final questions. So what I was saying an about hour the hour left in the basket bunny. Yeah, yeah, that was a long, that was a long time for this kind of thing. Um, oh, thanks you guys. And I, uh, I think the hummingbird will be perfect. I think that would be a really fun one. So what I was saying about the legs is if you want to take the butterscotch or whatever leg color you used and give your chick that little hawk, a little bit more of a wrap. I should have done it sooner because it's hard to do now that all this fluff is here. But the chick pack makes three, right? The chick pack makes three, yeah. And it's got white in it as well. Yeah, this is really hard to do now without with all this fluff. So if you guys are not, um, which most of you probably are, um, signing up for our newsletter would give you the earliest, I think, notification of the shop opening. So that would be good. Um, I'm not even going to throw out a time right now because my best laid plans are... I know. I kind of said we hope within maybe a week. Another week, but yeah. we don't know. Yeah. That's assuming nothing changes. 
Yeah. As far as what we're allowed to do. Right, right, exactly. It is just, it really is a great big question mark. Okay. Mama's tired. They're asking you to post a picture on Sanfair. Okay. I will, I, I'll, it might not be right now, but, um, well, I could probably do, I could probably do something now. Because I don't know when I'll be back. <laughs> So, okay, anything else? That's all I see. Oh, thanks you guys so much. Um, thank you for joining us and for being a part of Fanfare and the felting community in general. It's pretty amazing, the, the medium and the people and the art and the craft of it. So we will be in touch and we'll let you know what we're doing and we'll let you know about the felt along if we do hummingbirds on friday there's you know the shop's not open so we'll be working with what you have um nothing would be on sale or anything like that it's just kind of make do with what you have and as soon as i can i'll i'll put a list up of what i'm going to be using so you have time to see if you have it on hand um i don't mind if you ask a question on fanfare you know, to trade with each other. I just would like for it to get moved to private message. Um, you know, like if you guys want to swap or anything like that, um, you can ask the question on fanfare. You think that would be okay, Kyla? I would think so. Yeah. Just if you ask a question that you're looking for something and someone says, yeah, then I would want your private transaction to be, um, to be private messages. So, um, and there are other suppliers open, so that's good. I'm just not familiar with what they have is the only thing. So thank you. We'll see you soon. Take care. Stay safe and healthy. And try to keep smiling. Um, chicks help. Felting helps. Stabbing helps. All right. Bye. Yeah.